How's it going everybody? A new testing ground cycle just started with three reworks and the removal of all party option selects. I'm careful with my word in here as at this point not all inputs have been tested so who knows what will be found in this week. But yeah, one week you guys have until next Thursday to try it. I will make the video about the option selects last. It'll take a while for people to get acclimated to it and I can't quite tell just yet where people are gravitating towards. For the reworks, we'll start with Raider, as can be seen by the video title and then whatever order you guys prefer, let me know in the comments. But before we get into all of that, today's video sponsor is Viking Jewelry. A lot of you are familiar with them already, it's high quality Viking necklaces, bracelets, rings and much more. And now they're expanding the shop a little. They now have a section for clothes with Norse inspired motives. Let's just look at the one here for women, need to do something for my overwhelming female viewership you know, solid 2%. So if you want Freya with two kitty cats in the front, now's your chance. Or if you're like a really butch male, <laughs> here we have Fenrir and Tyr. Obviously a tank top so you can show your huge muscles as well. If any of that interests you, I have a 25% discount code on the whole apparel section here for the next 48 hours. This includes the hoodies, the beanies as well as the mask because I still need all of you to stay safe. Use freeze25 at the checkout. And the other discount code is 15% on the whole store. So if you're interested in any of the jewelry, you can get that at a reduced price as well. That code is valid for the next 10 days. All codes and links will be in the video description, so feel free to check out the store if you've seen anything interesting. All right then, back to the topic at hand, Raiders changes. Well. Partly because of the sponsor I wanted to cover them first, but it's also because this rework is by far the least extensive. Compared to the other two, these look more like some basic quality of life changes. Similar to what Zerka got last time, things he should have had a long time ago, to put it simply. So what did he get then? Let's start with the nerf. Raiders chain heavies used to have an almost instant hyper armor starter. This was used to trade against people that mindlessly deflected or dodge attacked him. It also allowed for armored guard breaks. If you got hit before the feint timing and then feints to guard break, you can grab recoveries. Now the hyper armor starts at the feint timing. This puts him in line with other heroes. While probably a healthy change, this is without a doubt quite a nerf. Raider's only saving grace in team fights was that you couldn't really interrupt him without risking to eat a 30 plus damage side heavy. He's now much more susceptible to being interrupted. Not to the degree as many others obviously, but it's not as easy to trade anymore. Additionally, I wouldn't want to call it Storm and Tap Peel, but it is really the only move with a bit of forward movement, so if Raider wanted to stop a punish, that was the go-to move. While already pretty bad, it is a top attack and only hits one person. Other Peel moves have either huge hitboxes or things like recovery cancels that make their use much safer. Raider cannot Peel now without being punished for it. In summary, Bad to non-existent peel and now even punishable on top of it. The hyper armor nerf feels much worse than it looks on paper in my opinion. But let's talk about that other move then. Stunning tap, storming tap got changes. It's been further sped up and is a 400 ms move now. It also got the enhanced property which means it won't bounce off on normal blocks, only on superior blocks. So it's no longer enough to block it, the raider can still keep going. Variable timings have also been removed, it now follows the usual soft feint rules, meaning it's happening at feint timing. This coincides with the hype armor changes, making it easy to get interrupted. It already had a fixed timing on the zone attack, so nothing changes here. It's only the normal heavies that are affected by this. And then the soft feint and the dodge version are now treated as two different moves. Well, for damage at least. Each now deals a different amount. We have 12 for the soft feint version, and 15 for the dodge version. This means that the out of stamina punishes went up a bit. Then stamina cost of the zones, neutral as well as combo. They both now cost 12 stamina down from 50 and 35 respectively. It's the same cost as a heavy now. They are no longer a huge stamina investment and will be more readily available. And then the other change which was not mentioned in the patch notes but the neutral zone now acts as a chain starter. It behaves like a starting heavy. Sadly, we cannot zone into zone. 
I thought it might have been a cool experiment at least. We have JJ with Sifu zone into unblockables already. Granted, Raider's attacks are both feintable as well as have soft faint options, but that's what TGs are here for, right? Going a little bit overboard wouldn't be the end of the world here. But combine all of these with the option select removal and, in theory, stronger unblockable offense, these zone changes should be a significant buff. I'll give more context on this in the end. Here's a little bug first. If you whiff the second light in a chain, you cannot chain into the finisher zone. It only works on hit. If you input the zone, only a light will come out. And we also need to talk about the recovery on the finisher zone. We are looking at 1300 ms for guard break, 1100 ms for a guard swap, and 1300 ms for dodging. These numbers are atrocious. Compared to Xion Hu, who can throw slightly less damaging unblockable heavy finishes, that he can recovery cancel, and the recovery is much lower to begin with. Stamina wise, it's treated like a heavy. Recovery wise, it's. I don't know what it is. I guess it's the new Shugoki hug. But let's just quickly finish the changes. Top lights are now all 500. The combo one used to be 600 and the finish is 700, meaning completely useless. And then the top heavy finisher is now 900, down from 1000. Not sure why they changed this, as the hyper armor changes shouldn't have made a difference in 1v1 scenarios when it comes to interrupts. But fair enough, the heavy is now slightly faster. Then for Stampede Charge, the patch notes say it's 500ms now. I'm still measuring 600ms. Funnily enough, the indicator the opponent sees is 400ms, meaning it functions like a 500ms move. Whether this is intended, I don't know, we'll have to wait for Yubi to tell us. But remember that zone attack now chains, so the open field Stampede, without a wall splat, now has a bit of chain pressure. The dodge window is now consistent with other bashes, 166ms before impact is your latest possible dodge timing. Crashing charge doesn't follow that and can be dodged later actually. Whether this makes Stampede even remotely comparable is another question. Alright, so that's it for the changes for Raider. Compared to Orochi and Shinobi, he feels a little like the red-headed stepchild in this testing ground. Like I mentioned before, these were all pretty much quality of life changes that should have come a long time ago. Granted, the devs mentioned that these were mostly changes geared towards his 1v1 potential. So let me paint you a picture what the reception of this hero will be. At low and medium MMR, he will be hated. People will despise him. Raider has some of the worst light animations, and despite them being normal 500ms neutral and chain ones, the animations make them seem faster than they actually are. Him now having a triple omnidirectional 500ms light chain will make him one of the poster boys for light spam complaints. I can guarantee you that if you now go to For Honor Rants, you will see some geniuses say exactly that. And maybe it's me on an alt account just to prove my point, but you'll never know. Combine this with the storming tap that has been sped up yet another time. This one is unreactable now, even at the top level this won't be consistently reacted to. It's like PK's dagger cancel or JJ's light soft feint on a dodge attack. But PK only uses it to apply the bleed and then switches up the moves she uses, and JJ doesn't just neutral dodge attack unless they're a madman. What I'm getting at here is that storming taps will come out much more often in a fight, at least that's what I'm expecting. Over time we'll see how effective the move truly is, but I don't have the highest of hopes right now. Maybe the unblockable pressure will actually be effective. But talking about the unblockable, that one will be more readily available now and you'd expect the high damage cleaving unblockables are pretty good in teamfights. But what you need to consider here is that John Hu already does that pretty well. And that is who Raid is competing with, with his zone. But as I hinted at before, team fighting is not just about big hitboxes. Good team fighters allow you to control the fight. You want to interrupt punishes, you want to stick to opponents, you want tools to set up for your teammates. And I don't really see that in Raider. He has little to no peel, 
No chase, no real ganks, and Stampede Charge is vastly inferior to the Abomination that is Crushing Charge. But let's talk about something positive, his Chainlinks. A lot of them got shortened, which also has an effect on actual gameplay. For example, the heavy into zone chain. On an out of stamina wall throw, you can now get the execution because you can delay it long enough on the left side. But the biggest thing is for interrupts. These clips here are the current life build. Raider suffers terribly from just being lighted out of his combo zone. Now this is the testing ground version. Even on light hit stun, he can trade with the other person. And I think he'll gladly take a combo zone for a light attack. The input here is pretty tight, you can't delay it at all. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but he still suffers from dodge attacks. The loss of the hyper armor now forces him to deal with dodge attacks like everybody else. No more trading with it with a massive finisher heavy. Which means fade to neutral. All in all, Raider might have gone up a bit in duels, but Stefan said on stream that they want him to be an alternative to Warlord and Kensei, somewhere in between. I hope I'm not misquoting him. And sadly, he's really far off from both, I'd say. Changes like the hype armor at Fane timing do work on Warlord, because he has 700 MS chain heavies. Warlord can teamfight, he has insane peel, and crashing charge is just beyond busted. Warlord also has slightly better feats. Juggernaut trumps all the tier 2 options Raider has, for example. And similar things can be said about Kensei. It just feels Raider falls short at everything he tries to do. Hitboxes are normal side attacks, zone speed and hitbox and so on. And let's not even compare the dodge attacks. I really don't think that these changes were nearly enough to make him viable. Maybe I'm overlooking something, but compared to the other testing ground characters, including the ones last time, he's not even close to Shugo, Jean Hu and many others. And I personally also didn't really have that much fun playing him while recording this footage. Well, let's leave it at that. We can come back to him at the end of the week and see if we feel any different. Don't forget to check out Viking Jewelry, links in the video description. Having said all that, I hope the video was helpful. Thanks for watching. Later, everybody.